So in this video I want to take a whistle stop tour of a Django project and the different files and components that are part of that project. So this is going to be a slightly more introductory video and I am planning a more comprehensive introduction to Django course hopefully in the near future. And I will still be releasing more advanced stuff so all of that is hopefully in the pipeline. And we're going to very loosely be following this guide here and for anyone that's new to Django or wants an overview of what is typically in a Django project Hopefully this video is going to be helpful. Now before we get started, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. And we have opened memberships just below the video. So let's get started. So what we have here at the moment is super simple. We have a Python virtual environment that we have activated. And we have Django installed in that environment. If we run pip freeze, you can see that we have Django. Now what you want to do if you're getting started with Django is to install it. And typically you would use a virtual environment in Python. And you can use the pip install Django command or perhaps UV add Django if you're using the UV package manager. Now once Django is installed, you have access to a tool on the command line and that's the Django admin tool. And that contains a bunch of commands, but what you want to do in order to start a project is run Django admin and then you use the start project command and you can give your project a name. So for this one, I'm going to give it a simple name of demo. And notice that on the left hand side, it creates this directory containing some folders and the manage.py script. So we're going to go over what some of this stuff is on the command line. Let's cd into the demo directory and let's start with this manage.py script. So what exactly is manage.py? This is a command line utility provided by Django. And as it says here, it's useful for administrative tasks and it helps you interact with your Django project. And if you're coming from another framework, perhaps Laravel, for example, this is the equivalent of the artisan command line tool. And one thing manage.py does is load the Django settings module. So in this case, it's pointing to a file called settings within the demo directory. And you can see that on the left hand side, settings.py. Now you don't actually need to worry too much about this code here. And chances are you're not going to have to edit much. The main thing to understand is that manage.py is this command line utility and you can run it to interact with Django, for example, to start the Django development server. And some of the most common manage.py commands are the run server command. And that starts the Django development server. We also have the make migrations and migrate commands. So make migrations is going to create database migration files. And these are created in response to changes in Django models, which we will look at later on. So the migration files essentially capture change sets on your Django models. And the migrate command allows you to actually apply those changes to the database. Another very common command is the create super user command. And that creates an admin user in the database that has access to the Django admin. And finally, one that I use a lot is the shell command. And this opens a Python shell with Django loaded in. So one example of how to run one of these commands on the command line, we're going to run Python manage.py and we can run the run server command. And that starts Django's development server on localhost port 8000 by default. So that's some of the most popular manage.py commands. Another command that you can run with manage.py is the start app command. And we're going to run that just now to create an application in the project. So Python manage.py startup. And let's say we're creating an IMDB clone. Let's create an application called films. And notice we have this films directory on the left hand side. And this whole concept is quite important to understand in Django. So a Django project, in this case we have a project called demo, typically consists of multiple applications. And these can be custom applications that you have created, like we just did on the command line, or it can be third party applications as well. And of course, some of Django's built in applications are also included. Now these apps are modular components inside the project, and each distinct application has a typical set of files. And we're going to look at some of these later on. So now we have a project called demo, and we have an app within that project called films. Let's now have a look at the project directory here and we're going to look at some of the modules within that. So we're going to start with settings.py and as it says here, it contains the Django settings for the project that we have, in this case, the demo project. And this is where all of the configuration is typically stored. For example, your application secret key, as well as other settings such as whether you want to run in debug mode and what allowed hosts are specified. Now, some important things here are installed apps. So as we said, a project consists of multiple applications. We created our own app called Films, so we can add that to the list and that makes sure it's registered within this installed apps setting. And we also have important settings here for middleware and Django templates if you're using HTML templates and vitally databases. So all database information, for example, connection information, as well as options and settings are specified in the databases dictionary. And similar settings would apply for things like Redis as well. So this is where all of these connection strings are going to be read in and defined. 
and any custom settings that you have in your application, you're typically going to add them to this module. Now let's look at urls.py. This is another very important file here in the project directory. This contains the URL configuration for a project. And you expose a variable here called URL patterns. And that is a Python list that consists of many routes in your application. And in this case, we have a single route for the admin UI. And this project URL configuration is essentially where we map incoming HTTP requests based on the URL to the view function or class that is going to handle that request and return the response. So when a request comes in, Django will look at all of the patterns that you have in this particular list. And if it finds that matching pattern, it's gonna know where to send the request. Now, the other two files that we have in this project directory are asgi.py and wizgi.py. Now, these are entry points for actually deploying your Django project in production. So wizgi.py is the traditional entry point, and that stands for Web Server Gateway Interface. And this is a convention that allows web servers to forward requests that have come in to Python applications. It's not specific to just Django. And this is for synchronous web applications, but if you're using async functionality, we also have asgi.py that can be used with async servers such as Daphne. So we have this project folder and those are the main files. The two ones that you really need to understand are settings.py and urls.py. Those are very important. Let's now have a look at the project directory, which is this one here, it's in the films directory. And when you run the start app command, as we did on the terminal, this is the structure that you get out of the box. So we have these files and I'm gonna start with one of the more common ones and that's models.py. Now Django models allow you to define the structure of database tables and provide an interface for getting data to and from those tables. So let's define a very simple model here just now and we have this film model. And in Django you inherit from the model class and that gives you access to all of that nice database functionality. Now you also define fields on the model that map to columns in the underlying database table. Here we have the name of the film and that is a car field. So Django's model class knows how to translate fields such as a car field into an underlying type in the database. And once you've defined a model or made any changes to the model, you can run python manage.py make migrations. And what that's going to do is generate a migration file. You can see that here. And that goes in this directory called migrations. And that contains the instructions that is essentially gonna be applied to the database when you run the migrate command. And Django's migration framework under the hood can translate these into the SQL required to make the changes to the database. Now you don't need to worry about the contents of the migration files. Typically you are gonna work with the models. And once you've generated those changes with the make migrations command, you can run the migrate command to actually apply those changes to the database. Now you can see when you start a project, when you run migrate, it creates a bunch of different tables and it runs a bunch of different migrations. The one that we are interested in is this one here in our films application, and it was the initial migration file that was created here. Now if we go to the database, which out of the box in a Django project is gonna be an SQLite database, we can open that in VS Code's SQLite Explorer, which is an extension. And if we look at the contents of this database, you can see here we have a film table and that contains an ID, which is the primary key of the table, as well as that name field that we added here on line five of models.py. So the model is translated into database tables. And if you're developing a database driven web application with Django, then you're gonna be working with models very commonly. And if you're wondering how to get data in and out of the database using this film model, check out the Django ORM series that we've done. I'll leave a link to that just below the video. Now let's move on and we're gonna look at the admin UI that's built into Django. So notice here within the application directory, we have an admin.py file. If we want to make changes to films that we have in the database, using that admin user interface, what we can do is import the film model into admin.py. I'm gonna paste in that import at the top. And then we can register models and the easiest way to do that is using this function here, admin.site.register, and we can pass the model class into that function. And if you want to then access the Django admin, what you can do on the command line is run another manage.py command. And that's the create super user command. That allows you to create a super user in the database. I'm gonna give mine a username of admin and you can optionally give the user an email address and a password is required. And then once you've done that, you can start the Django server. So let's run python manage.py run server. And as we saw before, that starts the web server on localhost 8000. And if we go back to the browser, you can see on localhost 8000, we have the Django installation page. Now I'm gonna go back to the URL and we're going to add slash admin to the URL and that is gonna take us to the login page for the Django admin UI. And the username that we had was admin and we can add the password here. 
And that takes us to this page here and we can now see the film model in the admin interface. And what we can do here is we can view the films on this page. At the moment we don't have any but we can add one at the top. And if we add Fargo here and save that you can see the film object appearing and this is the list page and that will tell you all of the films that you have in your database and it gives you the ability to also edit the film. So for example if I save this here that has updated that film instance in the database. And finally we can also delete films if we don't want that instance to be in the database and that brings us back to zero films here. So this Django admin UI is provided out of the box by Django and it makes administering your database and adding and viewing and removing instances for example very easy. So that's the admin.py purpose, it allows you to register your models with the Django admin. Let's now look at some of the other files. So we have tests.py, this one is self-explanatory. So if you want to write tests in a Django application, you can write them in this file or you can break your tests out, for example, into a tests directory. And underneath that we have another really important one and that's views.py. Now Django views contain the logic that handles an incoming request and then after that logic is processed, it's going to return a response to the user. In Django you can write two types of views, we have the idea of a function based view and we also have class based views as well. Now Django views are similar to controllers in frameworks like Laravel and Ruby on Rails and we can define very simple views such as this one here. So I'm going to import the HTTP response class from Django and let's define a function here that we're going to call index. So if I can spell that right, we've got index and what we pass to Django function views is the request object in Django. Now typically in a view you're going to perform some kind of action such as looking up objects in a database or saving new data to a database and then you'll return some kind of response. In this case we return a very simple response that has this text saying important response and once you create the Django view you can then create a URL that's going to map a request to this view. So let's go back to urls.py and we can import the views module from this films application in our project. So at the top here from films let's import views. And then in the URL patterns list we can define another path and let's give that a path of important URL, so important dash URL and then we can map that to views.index. So essentially when a request comes in at this URL here it's going to forward that request for processing to this view and you can write any Python code you want inside the Django view but you do need to return some kind of response. So let's test this out, we have the server running at the bottom so if we go back to our application I'm going to go back to the URL here and let's change this to slash important URL and when we do that we can submit the request and we get the important response and that's coming from this parameter here to the HTTP response class. So views.py is one of the most important files in a Django application. That's where your logic for request response processing is going to be contained and we'll cover that in greater detail in the Django introduction series. Now in a normal situation you're probably not just going to return a bit of text like this. Maybe you want something a bit more comprehensive and Django has the concept of templates built in and these templates allow you to return a traditional HTML template containing the markup for a given web page. So let's see how we can actually include a template just to finish this video. So in the films application we can create another directory and that's going to be called templates and Django can find any HTML files within a templates directory of an application. So let's add index.html here and then we have this HTML file and we can add some content to that. So I'm going to paste this in here, very simple HTML document. Inside the body of the document we have a paragraph tag and it has this inline style setting the text color to red and the text this is an HTML document returned from Django. So let's save this and go back to views.py. In the index view here we want to return that template instead of this hard coded string. So let's use the render function and this is a shortcut Django provides and it allows you to return a template. So the first parameter to render is the request object and as you can see on VS Code the second parameter is the template name. So we can add index.html as a string here and that means it's going to find and return this index.html template with this content here. So is this going to work? Let's go back to the page here and let's refresh the page. And notice now that we get back the content from the HTML file and it's got that red color. So we've now been able to take an HTML file and render that and return that as a response from a Django view function. So let's just finish this off by highlighting the flow of a Django application. So what happens is that you define an application that contains some URLs that map requests at that URL to a given view function or class. And the view function is responsible for handling the processing for that and returning a response. So when a user sends a request to a normal Django web application, 
the web server is going to forward that request and that's usually going to be using the WSGI protocol and this application object here is going to interpret that request and based on the URL in the request it's going to forward the request to one of the view functions for processing and then the view function will perform whatever processing is required and it will return a response to the client and the render method here is one way to do that if you're returning an HTML template so that is the traditional request response processing that Django performs and I want to finish this video just by looking at some other components that might be part of a Django application we've covered the ones that come out of the box and the very common ones but here are some more now you might have a forms.py module and that's where you can bring in logic and fields for web forms into a class and also define validation if you're working with an API you might also have a serializers.py module and this is used alongside Django REST framework for converting Python objects such as Django models to JSON data and vice versa so that's very common in API development you might also have a services.py file so if you use services to consolidate business logic that's another module that you might have or you might also have a directory containing different services in your application if you're interested in a video on that concept let me know and of course one other thing you might have is the dreaded utils.py so this is a module containing a bunch of stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else and in the end you end up with a bunch of random functions and classes and I would say that's best avoided if possible now there's so much more that Django does provide than this and that includes things like handling static assets, caching, database querying which we mentioned was covered in the ORM series and also customizing the Django admin and form classes as well as template concepts such as context and template tags and template filters lots of other stuff provided by Django in this video we've given a brief overview of the main components so if you're just getting started with Django as a web framework I hope this has proven useful and if you're interested in any particular concepts as a follow-up to this let me know in the comments and if you want to support the channel I'll leave a link to this coffee page just below the video and thanks again to everybody who has contributed much appreciated so we're going to bring more Django intro videos very soon as well as continuing with intermediate content as well if you have any requests in particular let me know in the comments and thanks again for watching we'll see you in the next video